Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Da da da, da 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 da, da 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 da. At your service to describe for you an antenna system that I would recommend for multi band use. And it's a simple multi band dipole. But there's a trick. It's coax fed. Notice 50 ohm coax goes to a dipole. You simply make this dipole as long as possible. L, L, each of those two should be the same, obviously, so it's a center fed dipole. A viewer has expressed a conundrum as to getting a better antenna than the one he has and he'd like to have a multi-band dipole. And he asked me about a variety of designs and whether a transmatch located at the radio could help tune a fan dipole or this or that or the other type of a dipole. If you put your transmatch at your radio your transmatch will make your radio C 50 ohms purely resistive. But it will do absolutely nothing beyond itself to the antenna system. It will have no effect whatsoever on the SWR on the coaxial cable. No effect on the resonant frequency or frequencies of the antenna. None whatsoever. It will just get rid of the reactants that may exist at your feed uh, point where the radio joins the coax. It will get rid of the reactants and match the remaining resistance to 50 ohms. And that's all it can do. Now sometimes you can force feed an antenna and get pretty good results. And by force feed I mean you can take an antenna with an SWR of say something like 10 to 1 on coaxial cable. Now that sounds like anathema but if you run very low loss cable and the frequency isn't too high and the cable run isn't too long you won't actually suffer enough additional SWR loss to make a difference of even one decibel. So you can get away with that sometimes, but I don't really recommend it because it introduces high current and voltage uh, loops along a uh, coaxial cable like this, and that can get you into trouble if your radio runs any significant amount of power. So I would not recommend anything like that. One possibility though is a remote antenna tuner, an automatic antenna tuner located where the coaxial cable feeds the dipole. Then you just make these links L as long as you can for your property. Place that thing at the center run whatever necessary power cables you have to to go up from the radio to the automatic tuner. Now I know that my particular radio which is an IC746 Pro has an automatic antenna tuner that goes with it and you simply includes the wires. It's only a few feet long, the control cable here. You just include uh, some plugs together and make the control cable just as long as you want. Other types of tuners operate by the RF itself in the cable. Still others have their own cables. Uh, maybe the viewers radio which is the Yesu FT 857 D. Let's hear it for that one. I have one of those. 
Uh, and you can get away with that kind of thing. I don't know if there is a tuner designed specifically for this radio. You might want to check that out and see. But in any case, somehow or another, you get an automatic antenna tuner up here. And uh, you can have a multi-band dipole that will work like a charm until it doesn't. Now, why might it stop working, you ask? Well, these automatic antenna tuners have a real flaw in them when it comes to using them at a feed point located at an antenna, which is where they're meant to be placed anyway. These are not tuners made of old-fashioned rugged capacitors and inductors. These are tuners made of fragile electronic components, some of which are even integrated circuits. And the slightest electromagnetic pulse will fry your automatic antenna tuner. And I speak from experience, because with my IC746 Pro, even though I had my vertical antenna taken down completely most of the time, that thing got fried by the electromagnetic pulse from some place. And I don't know where that pulse could have come from except from a nearby lightning strike. And by nearby, I guess maybe not, not necessarily that nearby. These are fragile things, and if you put an automatic antenna tuner up here, and you ever get a thunder shower anywhere near your vicinity, chances are excellent that you're going to fry this thing. And even if you manage to disconnect the antenna during the storm, the control cable leading up to that tuner can gather enough of a... Uh, of an electromagnetic pulse, enough of a surge current to fry its innards. So that's an elegant, beautiful solution with just one flaw. It's about as rugged as a wooden boat would be in a hurricane. It's going to fall apart. It's going to get fried. There's just no two ways about it. So, although it's an elegant solution, I can't really recommend it except for climates where thunder showers hardly ever occur. Such places include Hawaii, KH6 land, much of California, especially the coastline, the south coast. I lived in Palos Verdes. I don't know if any of you from that area know what that is, what that place is. Hardly ever had a thunderstorm there. We had some pretty nasty weather sometimes because I was there during the El Nino event of 97-98. But rarely a thunderstorm. So in places like that, maybe you'll get away with this for a couple of years. In a place like where I live, the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of abundant lightning storms. It might last a week before you fry that sucker. So, beautiful, elegant solution with one flaw. <laughs> one real big flaw. But, if you want to chance it, you can try that. I have another idea, though, and I'll cover that in another video. Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of W1GV, saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which in my native language translates as did da 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 da